r slash ask reddit reddit has anyone here actually killed another human being what was it like serious i'm a respiratory therapist we are the ones who take people off of life support it's not for everyone my dad he had leukemia and was in an induced coma and his organs were starting to fail and get infected and I just couldn't see him like that. He wouldn't have wanted it. I know he didn't. I had to sign a document where the last line literally said if the machines are turned off he will die and I accept this responsibility. I signed it. I had to. Couldn't bear to see him suffering. Love you dad. Miss you. Edit. Thank you all for your heartwarming replies. Many have gone through the same situation it seems and my heart goes out to all of you. If any of you need someone to talk to, feel free to send me a message. I killed my dad. Indirectly. When I was 20. 25 now. Me and my dad got in an argument. He was having issues with abusing Oxycontin and battled anxiety and depression. In the argument I told him why don't you just go take some pills. You aren't such a dong when you are them well he took them. A lot more than he should have. And I didn't know. I came home from work. Went to wake him up for dinner. And he was cold and had vomit in his mouth. You better believe I blame myself for that. This breaks my heart. I'm so sorry. To make it worse. My sister has straight up told me it was my fault several times. It's only when she gets pissed at me. So I know she doesn't actually mean it. And only says it because she knows it's a soft spot for me but it still kills me. Your sister sound mean. I ran over someone with my car. I was with my family going Christmas shopping when I was 16. I was driving. We were on the interstate in a pretty high traffic area. I remember seeing someone fall from the car next to us. I'll never forget the thud the car made as we hit another person at 70 plus miles per hour. As it turns out, he had actually stepped in front of another car and they knocked him into my lane. Not that it really makes a difference, but he was probably already gone before I hit him. Not the ideal Christmas shopping experience. Edit. It happened in Huntsville, Al about 9 years ago. That's too heavy for a 16 year old. I'm sorry that happened to you. So my English is not so good but my cousin said I need to put this here so here I am. I was a soldier in the army of Mexico. I joined the army when I was 18 back in 2007. I did not go to college to get a diploma. I thought instead I will go to join the army and protect my country from the drug cartels and the rebels and terrorists. The first time I killed another human was in 2007. Around the end of the year, my group was set to raid a house which was thought to have a cache of weapons, money, and also used to store cocaine that was meant to be sent to the USA. The raid happened at 3 a.m. The house was two stories tall. We breached through multiple places. I don't think they expected us because they had guns but they did not respond to fast to us when we hit them. The guy I killed was no more than 15 years old. That mass with my head still. I killed a child. The last kill I recall before I left. He was my friend. But he was a traitor. He was telling the cartels when we were coming. He was telling them what we know about them. He was doing it because they paid him. What he did made it so a lot of my friends and comrades died. We found out. Our job was to arrest him. I put a bullet in his head. We wrote in the report that he had shot at us. And that we had no choice but to shoot back. For real though. We went to his house in regular clothes. We took beer. When he opened the door he was all smiles and told us to come in. We did. I shot him in the head I will never regret it. A. Sorta. I harangued a kid to play video games and do laser tag. He said he didn't want to it. But I applied a fair amount of peer pressure. Later that night he had a seizure and died. He hadn't told me he was epileptic. I guess he was embarrassed. No one ever blamed me. And, to be sure, he bore responsibility. But I felt horrible for years. Damn. Mine was through decision. But I felt as though I had personally done the deed. Freshman year of college, a bunch of friends and I had planned on going out camping for Memorial Day weekend. At the last minute, I changed the plans on us to go swimming and staying at my family's lake house instead. Because beds, and TV and stuff. First night and it in the water, we decided to swim out to the middle of the lake and just tread water and laugh and splash around. After a while we all swam back to the dock and I was second to last in front of Tommy. Tommy never got out. I dove back in but couldn't find him anywhere. 
We had no phone in the cabin so after I ran back up the hill I ran barefoot down the gravel road to the main road then to the nearest neighbor's house hysterical. They called the police and then at the end divers found him about 12 feet from the end of the dock. I blamed myself horribly for the change of our plans. I sat through the funeral numbly while his parents lied to me about how much he looked forward for weeks to the swimming trip. I stopped going to my honors classes and drank and smoked myself into an opium stupor for the rest of the semester and failed out of college. I kept abusing myself for two years until I finally got myself some help with my depression over it. Sorry for any errors. Typing this on mobile on break at work. Edit. Thank you for your words all. I am in a much better place, albeit at a later point in my life. I'm now 34 and about to finish the first stage of my higher education. As for how he drowned, it was never fully explained to me beyond suspicion of him getting a cramp and going under, and I assume a gasp of pain while underwater did him in. Comma. A few years ago I was driving home from work in a snowstorm. The trip from work to home was about 54 kms. It was about 1030 pm, and probably about minus 40 with the wind. A man stepped out onto the road in front of me. He was outside my headlight range but I managed to catch the glint of something. Years of driving that road I learned to react quickly to little things. Deer or other animals eyes reflect light. I managed to skid and slid to a stop only lightly bumping him as he didn't move. He got into the car, smelling strongly of booze and through the slurs he told me THST he needed to get to Lloyd Minister, a city about an hour's drive from my location. I told him I wasn't driving to the city but I would drop him off at the bar slash motel in the little town I lived close by call Chauvin. I did and along the way he told me he needed to see his daughter and it couldn't wait. No idea why but he was clearly drunk and freezing so I just agreed. I left him at a bar which he went into and drove home. Several days later I learned that he had gone back out shortly after and froze to death on the side of the road. He was trying to get to the city to see his daughter in the hospital. She died the day he did. It wasn't really my fault but I feel like I should have at least talked to the people in the bar before I went home. I just wanted to get home as soon as possible cause the weather was getting worse. Although it's not murder, I didn't return my best friend's call the night he overdosed and died. Sometimes I feel if I answered and we hung out, I could have prevented the chain of events that occurred. Sadly, addiction is a powerful entity. I work for the railroad. I've killed 3 people in my 12 years on the rail. 2 were suicides. That didn't really bother me. The one that really got me though was hitting a family at a crossing right before Christmas. The roads were icy and they couldn't get stopped in time. My train hit the car dead center on the passenger side, killing the mother instantly. It spun them around and flipped the car off the tracks. The two kids and the dad walked away with minor injuries. I'm a little late to this but really just have to get this off my chest. Don't really have anyone to talk to this about. This August I was involved in a car accident where a pedestrian ran out in front of my car and died. It is honestly one of the most devastating things that has happened to me. There are things about that night that I will never forget. Like the sound of my car impacting with him. Or just all the glass that was everywhere. I will forever remember that man's name and that on the 8th of August at 9.29pm I killed him. The worst part about it is the first time you remember every day that you were responsible for another person's death. Your heart just sinks down into your stomach. People try and tell me that it was not my fault and I did everything I could. But that doesn't help me at all. All I think about is if I wasn't driving he would still be alive. I'm also really paranoid about people crossing the street not at a crosswalk. Every time I see it I have like a little mini panic attack inside my brain. So yeah basically it sucks. It sucks a lot. And it's something that you will never forget. My cousin killed herself a few years ago by stepping out in front of a car on the highway. And it may sound weird but I can't help but think about where the guy girl that hit her is now and how they were affected by it. It always makes me think about how one day can change your entire life. Not sure if you're counting war. If not disregard. At the time when it happened I was overcome with mixed emotions. I was happy because I was part of the club. The first group of people my team killed were an Iraqi mortar team and they were actively shelling the base I lived on. Which was the same base my brother was on. So the incentive to kill them was absolutely present. 
It didn't really start to process until maybe 5 months later. I started to sit around smoking my hooker and thinking about that day. Remembering what they looked like when I was staring down at their contorted faces with their brains hanging out. Holes in their neck. Dried blood everywhere. Then thinking of what they looked like on their id pictures. It was very hard for me to process because we had lost so many people I felt split between satisfaction and knowing I put a huge dent in their manpower and ability to attack us. But at the same time I kept thinking about how everyone there came from a family, had a mother and was at one point a helpless child who just wanted to live and find its place in the world. I had just had my first son while I was deployed if you can't tell by all the emotiony stuff. During this time in my life I was also absolutely convinced I was going to die there. So I spent every downtime I had sitting around contemplating what it will be like when I'm no longer self aware because I don't exist. What it will be like to not know I'm here. Have no emotions. Just gone. The thought that I scratched someone off from existence into oblivion is the hardest part. EDT. Oh Jesus. I took the day off from reddit to deal with some personal stuff and I come back to this incredible feedback and gold. Thank you kind stranger. I love you all. I have one that really sticks with me even though it was justified. I was in a big fi fight in Afghanistan and was taking cover behind a small building. Across the field there were two guys in an alley with AKs. I shot a grenade from my 203 and it landed a few feet in front T of them and messed them up pretty bad. They were laying there bleeding out and I just looked to my friend. Laughed and said double kill. With a high five. The killing them doesn't stick but the fact that I was so giddy and happy about taking someone's life is what sticks. Iraq. If I hadn't shot him he would have thrown his grenade at my truck. It went off in his hand. 14 years ago I, 12 years old, was riding a bike in the park with friends. A buddy of mine challenged me to a game of chicken. We were to ride directly towards the street, and first to chicken out and not cross lost. As I was approaching the street I slammed the brakes before the curb and a car was coming around the bend who swerved because he thought I was going into the street. It was an old man who hit a pole and was severely injured. The car was about to catch fire so my friend and I removed him from the vehicle. He told the cops it wasn't my fault. That he swerved because he thought I was going to cross the street but that I was stopped. The man died the next day in the hospital. It still shakes me up a bit to realize I caused that because of a stupid game with a friend. I never rode a bike again until last year. Yes. Saw a guy robbing another man at an ATM with a pistol. Ran across the street just as he turned to run off. He saw me and pulled his gun back up. I fired three times. He shot once. But missed. The police later said it was probably just a reaction by his body to getting shot. I don't really feel bad about it. I probably should. But I don't. There was no way he could have seen that I had a gun in my hand. So he was willing to just gun me down. Edit. I should add since I didn't answer the second part of ARP's question. Terror. That's what it felt like. Absolute terror. That feeling only lasted for a couple of seconds. But for those seconds I was as afraid as I have ever been in my life. Afterwards, I checked to make sure I didn't get hit. Made sure the shot he fired didn't hit anyone. There was no one to hit. And it struck a brick wall. No pass through. Then I called the police. Me and the man who was robbed sat in silence as the sirens grew closer. I said at most 10 words to him the whole time. I had been in prison for about a year when I filed a grievance on the guards for some dirty shit they pulled. They responded by transferring me to a rough unit, trying to get me to PC and lose all my privileges. I was a gentle person, young, slender, white, gay acting. Most people in my prison didn't care about people being gay at all. By one big nasty white guy kept harassing me. He cat called me even before I moved over to his unit and the first couple of days after I moved over he started yelling insults at me as we came back in the unit from Chow. All I wanted to do was talk trash back to him. But I didn't grow up talking rough. I yelled something like, shut up George, you ain't nothing but a punk beach anyway, or something like that. I yelled it in front of all his friends and they said, all like a bunch of kids in high school. Prison is like high school. George came to fight me that night. He just knocked on my cell door and said that he had no choice. Since I had called him out like that, I was scared to death. But there was nothing I could do to avoid a beating. Dude was really big, but also kind of old and out of shape. 
I did okay at first, dodging him, trying to run around on the tear in front of my cell, trying to get him winded, but he caught me and drug me into my cell and threw me on the floor. He got on top of me and started punching me in the face with one hand and holding my throat with his other hand. The punches didn't really hurt, but I couldn't breathe. Somehow I bucked him off and slammed his head into the metal bunk. I squirmed out from under him and ran out. He didn't follow. I tried to catch my breath and cautiously looked back in the cell. He was laying on the floor, writhing around. When I came in closer I saw his eyes were open. But he was just looking at the wall. Slack jawed. I figured I had knocked him out and I was happy. Then he had a seizure. He flopped around violently and froth started coming out of his mouth. There were people standing around. But no one knew what to do. I ran down and asked for an emergency medical response. Some screws and nurses came and took him downstairs on a stretcher. An ambulance came. Lights and sirens blazing on the way in. But quiet on the way out. It was pretty obvious what had happened. He had red swollen knuckles and I had a fat lip and black eye. I was put in the hole for a month. But investigations found me not guilty and the state didn't press charges or even come talk to me. I'd like to say that people respected me more after that. But no they didn't. I got beat up a couple more times before I got in with a clique. People respected the fact that I had taken a beating and not told on the person. Prison is a weird society. Never filed a grievance again. R.I.P. George. You were a big dumbass. But you didn't deserve to die like that. Edit. I was in for a probation violation. My original charge was vandalism. Then I got violated for driving without a license. Sharp lifting and some dirty pee tests. Don't judge me. I had issues. Doing better now. I was 13 and home alone with my little sister and heard glass breaking at the back door. Then the knob rattling. Then the door squeaking. I got my sister and we ran into my dad's office. I grabbed his rifle from the shelf and told her to hide under the desk. I stood in front of her and aimed the gun at the hallway. I heard footsteps coming this way and a man I didn't recognize came around the corner. I pulled the trigger and everything that happened next is still a blur. Apparently I kept shooting until the magazine was empty, hitting the intruder 22 times. He had multiple warrants out for his arrest for drugs beating his girlfriend, and a string of convenience store robberies. I lost a lot of sleep worrying it would happen again, and I still go into panic mode if I hear a suspicious noise. I absolutely cannot relax or go back to sleep until I search the house. You may have saved your little sister and even yourself. Who knows how ducked in the head that guy was. Army combat medic. Afghanistan vet. I was men of firefights over the course of the deployment but most of time we were at range. One day though, a dude from another village ratted out his neighbor. The dude's neighbor and his two sons had a weapon cache under his house for fighters to use when they crossed the border from Pakistan. So we went up one evening to bust his ass and get it taken care of. Well we went up and the Turp and PL are shaking this dude down while we check the house. My TL spots a small door that gotta be our basement storage area we are looking for. So we try and nonchalantly head over and the dude sees us and flips. Starts yelling and carrying on and immediately the Turp tackles him. No clue what he said but right after his kid busts out the door we were about to stack on. Weapon in hand. I was the first one to open up since our TL had turned away to see what the duck was going on. In my mind now it seems just like a really fast blur. I'm not even sure how I moved that fast. First round hit him in the mandible area and the other two hit him in the neck. At the time I felt nothing. We just stepped on and over him and into the room he came from. We did our jobs. Wrapped up our one live prisoner and bagged the dead one. We searched for a bit for the other son but never found him. Suppose he's either in Pakistan or leading some jihad elsewhere now. Now when I think on it I get the strangest mix of emotions. I feel rushed and exhilarated just thinking back on it but I also feel a little ashamed for feeling that. When I think about the way he looks afterwards I find myself sick to my stomach so. IDK why I see God day in and day out working in M's and it never bothers me. There's no regret there. I've searched myself long and hard for it. That guy would have killed my guys had I not shot him and I doubt he was the first one I'd killed although he was the first one I confirmed. I'm not really sure how to end this post since there isn't much else to it. Edit. Gold, this is a day I have dreamed of. I can die a happy man now. 
I'm a little late but whatever. When I was in third grade my next door neighbor came to pick me up from school because my grandmother couldn't make it in time to pick me up. While we were heading to the car, I stepped in front of him and a strap from the back of my book bag. It was a rolling one. Tripped him up and he broke his knee. He had to go to the hospital to get surgery and the doctors ended up using an anesthetic that he was allergic to and passed away. His wife very clearly told doctors not to use this certain anesthetic but they went ahead anyways. After his death she became very depressed and died a few years later due to cancer. She wouldn't leave the house and I feel like I caused both of their deaths. They were such good people and I know they really cared for me. Also his wife could have sued the doctors but she decided not to because she didn't want to ruin the doctor's career. Edit. I really appreciate the comments guys. I rarely ever post but I felt like I needed to let someone know my situation. I really haven't spoken about it at all until now. Thank you. Was on murder jury. Found him guilty and voted for death penalty. Sitting 20 feet away from someone. Looked them their mothers and their families in the eyes then told them that he was going to die they're still on death row even though that was almost 20 years ago it's a terrible feeling that you constantly hope you never get used to i was corman with the usmc and did two tours discharged my weapon twice in afghanistan with one time being a definite hit i have moved forward but it's a hard pill to swallow knowing you took a life no matter how likely you were to die in the situation edit and as always my experience is different from others so, yeah, just my feelings on it. I accidentally killed my 13 year old brother when I was 8 years old. My step grandfather left a gun, very small, toy sized, in the backseat of my uncle's car. On the way to dinner with the family I found it and accidentally shot my brother. This was one year after my father was fatally killed in a car accident. My father died the night before my brother and sister's 12th birthday. Edit. Thank you so much for the gold and all of the nice comments. I really appreciate it. This has made my day. Thank you all. Colon. There was a thread about this a while back. I did in self defense when I was 13. This guy raped me and I think he was going to try to kill me and I ended up stabbing him. There was a whole trial and whatnot. I felt bad that he died but I don't feel bad for defending myself. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.